Yo, yo, yo. Another day, another video. Today I want to talk about a topic close to my heart. I've dropped a little bit of clues here and there on the channel so far, so some of you may have been able to guess it already. And if you haven't, it's psychedelic drugs. See, I've experimented with psychedelics starting when I was like 16 with a LSD trip. And ever since then, it just led me on this path of crazy ass mind expansion and just experimenting with my identity. And I don't think I'd be where I am today if it hadn't been for those early experiments and even the more recent ones. And just, I kind of want to talk about what role psychedelic drugs have in your leveling up journey. Because they have a role, they have a very important role. The current model surrounding sort of the, the effects of psychedelics can be thought of as the relaxed beliefs under psychedelics model. What this suggests is that when you consume these drugs, you can kind of use the analogy of metallurgy, of annealing. You heat a metal up, you're building this katana blade. You heat the metal up, and then in the cooling down process, you kind of recrystallize the, the property. You recrystallize the metal to have new properties. And so that's the annealing process. In a similar way, when we take psychedelics, it's like our consciousness becomes more fluid, our identities become less rigid. And we enter this state of psychedelia, and you know, from there it's like we're looking at the world from a new perspective, like a newborn. We're seeing things for the first time again, and we're not, we're sort of less affected by our preconceived notions. We're kind of able to look at things and then see a new perspective. And then in that fluid state, once we start coming down, things start to recrystallize. And from there, we can kind of reestablish a new identity, a new perspective, a new sense of self-love, right? A new appreciation for life. And so, how can we use this to kind of catapult ourselves to have a more meaningful life, right? Well, I suggest that there's no one way to use psychedelics. Like, I wouldn't reserve these substances for healing. I don't think that that's the appropriate way to kind of characterize what these things are doing. In previous videos, I mentioned this idea, this, this concept called valence. In psychology, valence refers to the dimension, sort of like the gradient of whether or not a mental state is desirable or undesirable. You know, the aversiveness or attractiveness of a mental state. Negative valence would be a state of anxiety, even boredom, uh, pain. Positive valence would be pleasure, excitement, all those, you know, emotions we associate with positivity or just positive physiological effects. And so in life, you're going from one time slice to the next and each, each time slice, each nanosecond, each plank length, what are you trying to do? Like you might not be conscious about it, but you're optimizing for valence. You're avoiding negative stimulus and you're kind of trying to get to positive stimulus, to positive mental states. So where do psychedelics fit into this picture? So if we kind of remove healing, like think of it like this. Let's say you have no intention of healing, no intention of anything but to have a good ass time. And you go to a party like Burning Man or Shambhala or any one of these big festivals and you take some psychedelic drugs there and you're in a good set and setting, you're feeling comfortable and you have a great time. You, you expand your consciousness, you dance your heart out and you come back, maybe you were working this desk job you didn't really enjoy, you weren't feeling fulfilled, but this experience granted you this new perspective, this new appreciation for life, this new childlike joy and wonder and, and a sense of awe. All of a sudden you have this fuel to maybe pick back up on some of the dreams that you left behind when you were a kid. And then who knows, like a couple years later, that becomes a reality for you. And the seed that was planted was that psychedelic experience you had many years ago. So you can think of it in two ways. 
in that state of fluidity and that hot, you know, your, your mental state has been heated up, you know, like the metal. You can experience new states of consciousness where when you come back down, you're acutely aware of what's possible. Like if you take something like 5-MeO-DMT and you feel one with God and all of a sudden you feel like this amazing oneness with everything, this unity, this universal mind. And it's like a state of ecstasy unlike anything you've ever imagined. Well, maybe now your anxiety around death is less. Maybe you realize the nature of the game and, and you're more willing to participate in it, to play. So that's kind of one, one idea, is that it makes you aware of the state space of consciousness. What is possible for you? Like, maybe you're just not aware and taking something like psychedelics is gonna help expand your mind, literally, to make you more willing to accept new possibilities for yourself, new identities. And sometimes taking on a new identity is just what we need to kind of make life more magical. And then the other, the other thing, instead of just like being able to see what's possible, is that they kind of act like valence optimizing technologies. So they themselves are allowing you to kind of be more aware of your mental processes, of your behavior, free from the context of your cultural operating system. What I mean by that is that you might, let's say we have somebody who has some sort of socially unacceptable desire. Maybe they're Maybe like 50 years ago, they're gay. Or maybe they like dressing like a girl, right? Like a guy likes dressing like a girl. Maybe that's socially unacceptable in certain environments, right? Well, when you take psychedelics, it might make you more accepting of the behaviors that previously you judged yourself for based on the fact that other people judged you for those behaviors. It kind of makes you get back in touch with who you are, what you want. You know, um, it kind of, by breaking down your ego a little bit, hopefully you can build your ego back up and it's healthier. It's more functional. It's more integrated into its environment, into the community of other egos. So it's not about not having an ego. It's about having a big, healthy ego, right? So. You, it's like when you break down your biceps in the gym, right? You're, you're, you're tearing apart the muscle, you're doing some damage, and then you take a break and then it rebuilds. You give yourself the proper nutrition, it rebuilds. The same thing with psychedelic drugs. Like you, you have a trip, hopefully you're in the right set and setting. Um, so the, same, the analogy would be with the bicep curl, hopefully you're lifting the right amount of weight, not too light as to not have an effect and not too heavy as to risk injury. Same thing with psych psychedelics. You don't want to take a dose too light to kind of not get deep enough. You don't want to take a dose too high to not be able to remember anything. And so you, you find your dose, you, you work that out. You're, you're in a good environment. You have the right equipment. So you got your, you got your dumbbells, you're in the gym. Maybe you have some music playing to give you some motivation. And you have, and you have your workout, you have your, your psychedelic experience. But what's key here is that it doesn't end there. The integration phase, the, the, the period after the come down is incredibly important. You want to be surrounded by people who support you in those realizations you have, in those insights that you've gained from those experiences. So if you just go out there and you, it's, it's the same as like going to the gym and not being consistent with it and not kind of doing all the things necessary beyond just working out to kind of help aid your muscle growth. So if you just take psychedelics expecting to level up as a human being, you're going to be disappointed. But if you start applying yourself and you start listening to those experiences and kind of doing the work, doing the inner work, you know, exploring yourself, exploring the boundaries of what it means to be who you are, maybe testing whether or not you're willing to take on new aspects of identity, then you're going to be much more rewarded for those, uh, for that courage. So, Ultimately, 
Don't just think of psychedelics as healing. Don't just think of psychedelics as pleasure. Don't just think of psychedelics as drugs. These are balance optimizing technologies. So they're incredibly integral in allowing the human being to make the most out of their experience here on planet Earth. This isn't something to be taken lightly, but you don't necessarily want to be too serious about it either. You want to be light. You want to be like a child, playful, experiment. But be careful. Be safe. These things, you know, in a sense, they're not illegal for no reason. It's not just because it makes people uh, and their cultural operating systems dissolve and they start to question the nature of reality and of governance. Well, that might be a whole, whole other story. They're also destabilizing. You know, you want to have that incredible support network of friends and family, of, uh, of mentors, to be able to help you stay on that path, help you find, find yourself, help you map out your journey, right? So anyways, um, basically, Leveled Up Human is going to be a lot about psychedelics, a lot about how to use psychedelics properly, about how they can relate to creating that life of our dreams. So definitely going to be a lot more psychedelic related content in the days, weeks and months to come. And I'm really excited because this is a topic I'm especially passionate about. And I mean, you know, I have an undergrad in cognitive science, which doesn't really matter. It's kind of irrelevant. I'm just passionate about this stuff on the side. Um, I read a lot about it. Part of the, uh, the psychedelic meetup group in Vancouver which is awesome. So yeah, hopefully uh, psychedelics are, you know, there's like a re renaissance going on now. So they're gonna gain a lot more traction in the years to come. And it's gonna be cool to see if they really do have that, that big impact on humanity that they have on the individual. With everything else that I've kind of been mentioning, it seems like they will. You know, the fractal hierarchical nature of the organization of mind. Anyways. If you like this video, if you like this content, you want to see more of this in the future, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.